All right, peace and blessings, Israel. This is Brother Joab, for those who don't know me. First and foremost, I want to give all praises through the Most High, through His Son, Christ the Anointed One. And today, I just wanted to speak on a couple of things that really was bothering my spirit the last couple of days, as in, as going around in Israel, in the community right now. We have um, hatred for one another. We have slander. We have lying lips and all that stuff and it needs to be addressed according to the scriptures because a lot of new sheep are coming in and they're learning these ways and they're thinking that um these ways are correct according to the scripture but the way that they're moving is not according to the scripture so as us supposed to be in Christ being as Israelites reborn again we have to understand there's certain ways that we're supposed to deal and communicate with each other so I'm going to read a couple of comments off of the um, YouTube because these brothers are supposed to be repentant in Christ, so-called repentant Israelites. So I'm going to read some comments off of YouTube and I'm going to um, go into the scriptures, Lord willing, so we can correct and edify because all scripture is given for reproof and edification according to the scripture. So one of these comments was saying, this baby was... Under IOIC, he left following after his friend who ran from correction. He never was a teacher, never was in the highways and hedges. Now he's a YouTube prophet with the understanding. Okay, baby boy, drink your breast milk. You were never ready to get off the titty. So for one, that is um, slander and that's tailbearing because if you don't know a person personally, how are you going to address issues that that person had or what was going on with that person? So let's go to the scriptures and see what the scriptures say about slander. And it says, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 18 says, He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. So the scriptures say you're supposed to know the whole matter and then rebuke. If you don't know the whole matter and speak on the matter that doesn't pertain to you, that's folly, meaning that is sin. So I'm going to read the, the um, YouTube comment again. It says, This baby was under IUIC. He left following after his friend who ran from correction. He never was a teacher. He never was in the highways and hedges. Now he's a YouTube prophet with the understanding. Okay, baby boy, drink your milk. You are never ready to get off the titty. So that, once again, that is slander. And according to the scriptures, Proverbs 10 and 18, it says, He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth for slander is a fool. So King Solomon is calling you a fool. For being slanderous, being a tailbearer. Like Leviticus 19, it says, don't, don't go up and down as a tailbearer. You understand? So those are the laws that we need to start keeping. So this is what this is what the other brothers are saying. And we have to read this stuff because this stuff is going on in Israel and they're teaching these young men how to be like these people, which is not right according to the scriptures. So this is, uh, I'm going to read some stuff and it might get a little crazy. So if you all, they got kids around, I don't know if you want the kids to, um hear this stuff but um this this is what um some of the so-called repentant men in israel are speaking and are making it public it says i'm not going to say the brothers names or, or who the brothers are talking about but i'm going to um just read the comments it says another weak nigger who followed after his whore wife took her back after another nigger ran up in it ill nigger you nasty that land vagina is defiled so if you're supposed to be repentant in christ why are you speaking these things and putting this stuff out on um on YouTube so everybody can see this stuff? So let's um let's go to First Peter three real quick because this stuff needs to be addressed in Israel and this stuff is really alarming for the new people that's come in that really was repentant and really want to learn after Christ and you have these men leading them astray. You understand? So I'm gonna go to First Peter three and sixteen. It says having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So these people that are speaking evil of you, they don't have the good conversation in Christ. You understand? These people are speaking evil of you because they have not yet learned Christ. They have hatred. And that's what, that's what is a lot of the problems that's going on now is we have untold hatred for one another. We bear hatred and grudges. For brothers and sisters that we don't even know. Because a brother is making a video that refutes your doctrine. Or a brother that is making a video that doesn't fit what you're saying. So instead of speaking wisely to the brothers or sisters. 
you do negative comments and you let your worldly flesh come about. And that's not what the scriptures say we're supposed to do. So I'm going to read again. 1 Peter 3 and um, actually I'm going to start at verse 15. 1 Peter 3 and 15 it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, meaning sanctify the Most High in your mind. You understand? And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of hope that is in you with meekness and in fear. It says in meekness and fear. It doesn't say puffed up. It doesn't say be proud. You understand? It doesn't say be abusive. It says with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed. So they speak evil of you and they speak in these lies. They're supposed to be put to shame because why? Your conversation is in Christ. And that's how their conversation is supposed to be. But why? They have not learned Christ. They have learned the doctrines of men. And this stuff needs to be addressed according to the scriptures. Because this stuff is, we're playing with fire, life and death here. I'm going to get into those scriptures in a second. It says, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers. So they speak in evil of you. Thanks, bro. I'll praise them. They said they, they speak evil of you as evildoers. They may be ashamed. So they speak in evil of you, speaking falsely of you as evildoers. But you're not doing evil because why? You put on Christ. You have repented from your sins. You understand? But they are still in the worldly mindset that they still talk vigorously against their brother. That they're supposed to so-called love. They're supposed to be united in Christ. But they have hatred towards their brothers. How are you united in Christ? But you have hatred towards your brothers and sisters. That doesn't make sense. But we united in Christ. And it says, Be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. You understand? It says, For it is better if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. So the Most High said, It's okay. It's okay that if you suffer for that, that the Lord's will be done. If you suffer for wrong-doing rather than evil-doing. So you, I'd rather suffer being falsely accused and actually doing what these brothers and sisters are saying that we're supposed to be doing. You understand? So I'm going to go to um, the book of James real quick. Because all this, stuff, like, so all this stuff needs to get brought out. You got brothers slandering brothers and sisters. You got brothers hating brothers and sisters. You got brothers and sisters refusing to repent and talking crazy. And thinking this stuff is okay according to the scriptures. This stuff is not okay according to the scriptures. You understand? So I'm going to read um, James chapter 3. I'm going to I'm read the whole verse. I mean the whole chapter. It says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So it says, My brethren, be not many teachers. You understand? There's not a lot of us that are supposed to be teachers. A lot of us don't have the understanding to be teachers. You understand? And it says, For we shall receive the greater condemnation. Why? Because the teachers are supposed to be held accountable for the sheep. They're the ones that's feeding the flock. And if you're feeding the flock wrong, you're going to be judged on that on judgment day. So... These elders, bishops, and deacons, or whoever so-called proclaimed teachers in Israel, they need to tighten up, tighten up their flock. Because they, the, um, as is the judges, so is the officers. And if your officers is talking reckless, that means they're learning it from somebody. If you're not correcting it, who's going to correct it? So I'm going to read it again. It says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And be able also to bridle the whole body. So it says if we, if we all offend everybody. And it says the one that doesn't offend, that person is a perfect man. You understand? Because we we, everybody offends and excuse me, everybody offends in word. But we have to learn how to bridle our tongue. And it's going to explain that in a second. And it says... Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So it says they put the bits in the horse's mouth because, you know, you got the saddle, the harness on the horse, and you put the bit in his mouth. And that bit from the saddle, it turns the whole horse. So that's what it's talking about. So it says this little small thing can control that big horse. And it's going to keep explaining what it's talking about in a second. It says, Behold, also the ships which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with every small helm within whatsoever the governor listeners. So it says this big old ship is controlled by this small helm, the wheel of the ship. This big old giant ship, this massive ship is controlled by this little tiny helm, which is the wheel. And it says, so even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. So our tongue... It boasts great things. It speaks 
great things, whether they be good or evil. And we're going to explain that. Behold, how great a matter a little fire can do. So uttering one little sentence can just make or break that conversation. You understand? And it says, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that is defiled the whole body and set up on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. So it says our tongue can lead us in the course of hell if we do not repent from the idle stuff that we're saying. You understand? Our, our, this little member in our tongue, like it says, the bits of the horse, it turns the horse, the helm of the ship, our tongue, our little tiny tongue can activate a whole fire, a whole world of danger. You understand? And it says, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. So our tongue can defile our whole body. We can be clean all day, but as soon as we utter some foolishness, that's gone. So we have to learn how to control our member, mortify our members. You understand? And it says, and set up on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of the things of the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. So man, we going around taming everything. All type of wild animals, wildebeest and all these type of crazy animals, lions and stuff like that. We got all these animals in the zoo. We can tame all these crazy animals, tigers and whatnot. But we can't seem to tame the one creature that's destroying everything. Our tongue. We can't seem to humble down and say, should I say this or should I not say that? Should I? That's why the phrase, bite your tongue, comes from. So we got, sometimes you got to learn how to swallow your pride and bite your tongue and mortify your member. You understand? And it says, but the tongue can no man tame and is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. So our tongue can no man tame. But what? Fasting, praying with the power of Christ, we can be able to edify our speeches. And it's going to explain that in a second. It says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father. Therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. So it says, with our tongue, we pray and bless the Most High. All praises to the Most High. But then we curse men made after the similitude of God. So we turn around and bless the, bless the Most High with the same tongue. And then we turn around and curse our brothers and sisters that look just like us, which are made after the image of God. That is self-hatred at its finest. We claim to be united in Christ. We claim to be Israelites, repented. We can bless the Most High all day. But then when it comes to our brothers and sisters, we have a perpetual hatred. And it just needs to end, Israel, because the time is running short. We have slanders, hatred, lying, follies, fornications, all this stuff going on. And everybody's just letting the stuff slide. This stuff is not, is not acceptable in the eyes of Christ, in the eyes of the Most High. Christ is not going around disrespecting people with his tongue. Peter didn't go around disrespecting people with his tongue. Paul didn't go around disrespecting people with his tongue. And I'm going to read that scripture in a second. Where a lot of Israelites misconstrue and like to twist the scripture that I'm going to go to next. But we have to learn how to mortify our members. You understand? It says... Out of the, uh, therefore bless we God, even the Father, and therefore curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. I just read a couple passages on YouTube where they was cursing men, made after the similitude of God, men that was made to look like you. So what, what's going on, Israel? What is really going on? We have secret hatred for each other that's coming out in our speech. We can dap up shalom all day long, hug each other, greet each other with a holy kiss and a holy salute. But then we inwardly jealous, spiteful, hating. Why? Where is that coming from? Well, we're going to find out in a second. It says, Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brother, these things ought not to be so. So James is telling you, out of the same mouth that you curse your brother and bless the Most High. He said, these ought not to be so. You got to do one or the other. Either you're going to be loving your brothers and loving your sisters, loving your neighbor like yourself, loving the Most High. And that's it. You can't be... I all praise to the Most High, but dang, I hate that dude. You see where the confusion lies in? It says, Does a fountain send forth the same place, sweet water and bitter? So it says, it's, apparent, it's comparing it to a fountain of water. It says, does this fountain give place? To, does it pour out sweet water and bitter water at the same time? No, it can only do one or the other. Either or, it's either going to pour out that water sweet, or it's going to pour out that water bitter. They're not going to be pouring out at the same time is either going to be one or the other you understand 
and it says, can a fig tree, my brother, bear all the berries? So can a fig tree that bears the fig, can it all of a sudden just start growing all the berries? No. It says, either a vine, figs, a vine, a vine branch, can it start growing figs all of a sudden? No. So can no fountain both yield salt and fresh? So it says, so, uh, what's it, so neither one, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, it says, so can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh? So the sweet and bitter water cannot come out at the same time. It either has to be one or the other. Do you understand? It says, who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you? Let him show, shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. So it says, whoever is wise among you, let you see by what? The conversation, the way that they speak. Why? Because you should know them by their fruits. If they end up talking crazy, slandering, having hatred against brothers, that is not the fruits of the Spirit. That is not the fruits of the Most High. And it's going to explain that. You understand? It says, But if you have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. So you repented in Christ. You're supposed to be so called in Christ. It says, But if you have bitter envyings and strife in your hearts and your mind, because why? That's what the thoughts proceed out of, out of your mind. You understand? It goes from here to here to here. You understand? So it says, glory not. So don't glory all praises to the Most High when you just cursed your brother. That is, that's foolishness. That doesn't make any sense. And it says, and lie not against the truth. Don't say I'm repented. Lie not against the truth. You still got hate and envy. You still have bitter strife. But you praising the Most High. You saying you blessed. You, yeah, you blessed by somebody and ain't the Most High. You understand? And it says, for when envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. The Most High is not in the midst of that. He said, when envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Every evil work. You understand? Nothing good is coming out of that. So if you're cursing your brother that looks just like you, you have self-hatred. You look in the mirror and you say, I hate yourself. You hate yourself. You don't love your brother. You don't love your sister. How can you love your family, love your wife, love your kids, but you hate your brother that looks just like you? Come on, y'all. This stuff got to stop. And it says, but the wisdom that, from a, that is from above, so the wisdom that comes from the most high, you understand? It says, this is first pure. So this wisdom is going to be pure. It's not going to be no trickery. It's not going to be diluted with anything. It's pure. You understand? Peaceable. The way Christ spoke, peaceable. We have to learn how to humble ourselves down and speak like the Messiah. Speak like Paul. Speak like James. Speak like Peter, Matthew, Luke, Timothy. You understand? Jeremiah, Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? We have to learn how to speak like that. But that comes with what? Mortifying your member. Taming your tongue. You understand? And it says gentle. It's not cursing people out. Calling people out of their names, but they're supposed to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. Where, where is that? At? Where is this, what scripture is that? It says, and easy to be entreated. So you're supposed to walk up to the person and actually you can have a conversation with that person. If you do not know how to have a conversation with that person, this, this love, this script is not coming from the Most High. This spirit is not coming from the Most High. It says, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy. So it has to be full of mercy, forgiving, and good fruits. That's the most important thing. It says good fruits. You have to produce the good fruits. That's why Matthew 7 says you should know them by their fruits. If you're not producing the good fruits, what the fruits are you producing? You're producing bad fruits, which is going to spoil and eventually is going to get cut off if we do not repent from this. You understand? And it says, without partiality, without what? Respect the persons. You understand? And without hypocrisy. So you're not going to be a hypocrite doing this stuff. You understand? Why? Because people are going to see you speaking and say, that person is of the Lord. Or they're going to hear you speaking and say, the Lord is not with that person. It's going to be one or the other. It can't be both. So it says, and the fruit of righteousness and sown and is sown in peace of them that make peace. So you have to make peace in order to get peace. You can't just expect somebody to be nice to you, but you rude as hell. Excuse my language. If you you rude as heck, you understand. You have to learn how to mortify your member. Even myself. See, I just said that, but I have to, you have to. We all have to learn how to control our tongue. There's a time and a place for everything. But if you going out here blatantly slander and blatantly breaking scriptures to please other men most i can't deal with you christ can't deal with you we're not out here to please man we are here to do the the work of the most high through his son christ so that other people can be saved we're supposed to be 
we are the Israelites. We are supposed to be the example these other nations understand these other nations are supposed to look up to and we they can't even look up to us why because we respect other nations more than our own brothers and sisters we can go up to any white man chinese man japanese man any other nation and say yes sir humble down shake their hand be humble nice but we look at our brothers and sisters like we evil like we have pure hatred for our own brothers and sisters the own brothers and sisters that's the same color of our skin we have pure hatred and that doesn't make sense so let me go to um, 2 Corinthians, because this is a scripture that a lot, of, a lot of Israelites like to twist this scripture. In the 2 Corinthians 11, 11 and um, 6, it says, But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. So this was Paul speaking to the people of Corinthians and Corinth, which is the province in Greece. You understand? He says, but though I be rude in speech. So let's let's get that the definition of rude. Because a lot of people think that using this scripture, though I be rude in speech, you can talk to anybody any type of way. No, that's not true. It says, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. So it says, though I be rude in speech. So it says, rude, ignorant, unlearned. So that this is the Merriam Webster definition of rude. It says, Ignorant, unlearned, simple, primitive, undeveloped. It's not talking about speaking to somebody harshly. It's not talking about speaking to somebody Ill, ill-mannered. And we're going to get those scriptures in a second too. So it says, Though I be rude in speech, so though I be unlearned in speech, unlearned in your type of Greek that you're speaking. That's what Paul was saying. He said, Though I be unlearned in your Greek dialect, you understand, that, you're, that you are speaking but not in knowledge. Why? Because he has the knowledge of Christ and he was preaching to them Christ. So he came up to this province in Corinthian and Greece, you understand, preaching Christ to them. Not knowing the full dialect of their language of Greek. So let's read it again. He says, though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. So Paul was saying that he's unlearned. He was unlearned in certain of the Greek dialects, but he still went to preach Christ to them. It didn't say he went, they didn't um, accept Christ, so he was talking crazy to them. That's not what it says. You understand? So let's go to, um, I'm going to read some scriptures out of the Apocrypha real quick. Actually, no, before that, I want to go to um, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. And it says, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, this is Paul again. It says, But ye know, um, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covets, covetousness, excuse me, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So let's focus on verse 10. It says, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So let's look up that word reviler, a, re a reveler, reviler. Not, not, not be confused with a reveler, which is a partier. This is a reviler. So it says, a reviler. It says, to assail with contumacious or oblivious language, uh, express or speak abusively, to revile somebody. To speak in a critical or assaulting manner. So Paul was saying those who speak re reviling languages, he says, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So if we don't change the way that we speak to one another, we're not going to make it to the kingdom if we do not repent. If we do not stop, it's, like I said, I'm going to read the definition again. It says in a critical or assaulting, insulting manner. So if we're speaking to each other, insulting one another, we are being re revilers. Do you understand? And Paul said that is not going to get us into the kingdom. So it says, reviling to assail and contumacious or opprobrious, opprobrious, excuse me, opprobrious language. You understand? So let's let's get that in um in Sirach, in Sirach twenty three. Sirach twenty three, the book of Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha, Sirach twenty three. And 15, it says, the man that is accustomed to oblivious words will never be reformed all the days of his life. If a man does not learn how to mortify his tongue, like it says in James 3, control that member 
it says, they will never be reformed all the days of their life. So they will never be changed all the days of their life. If you, don't know, if you do not learn how to control your tongue and learn how to speak to one another, you're going to stay the same. You're going to stay in that fleshly mindset that it's okay to talk to anybody any type of way because they don't agree with you. That's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures say, speak to people with meekness and fear. Be easily entreated. Peace. You understand? That's what we have to learn how to do. We have to learn how to control our tongue. And for the elders, bishops, and whoever else is letting the members do this, you have to check this. Because it starts from the top and goes all the way from the bottom. As is the judges, so is the officers. So if you're letting this stuff run rampant, what does that say about you? We all have to get things correct. But it starts from the top. It all starts within yourself. Set your house in order. And then go reprove the people. You understand? So I'm going to read it again. Sirach chapter 23, verse 15. The man that is accustomed to appropriate words will not be reformed all the days of his life. So this person that is used to assaulting people with their language, insulting people with their language, assailing people with their language, cursing people out, speaking all manners of evil, slanders against that person, is what? They're not going to be reformed. They're going to, stuck in, they're going to be stuck in that same mindset hey, to call people out of their names. Out of their God-given names. You're supposed to refer to your brother you as your brother. Not a coon. Not a nigger. What, 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 what purpose is that going to do? You're not going to do nothing but make that person feel less about themselves. We're supposed to be uplifting each other. Getting ready for the kingdom. Not bringing each other down. Why? But it all become, goes into what? Self-hatred. We was taught to self-hatred a while back. We was taught to hate one another and love each other nation but ourselves. Turn on against each other. Mandingo fights doing slavery. Black on black crime. What, all that stuff started in slavery. And now we're still carrying that mindset on to this day. You understand? So that's the stuff that we got to learn how to change. We got to start with ourselves. We got to look at, really see Christ in our brothers and sisters. Christ was not walking around calling our people niggas, coons, wetbacks and stuff like that. That's the stuff that we got to start. We got to start changing ourselves. We have to look at each other and really see Christ in our brothers and sisters' eyes. But we can't do that because we don't even see Christ in us. Some of us repent it and say that, yeah, Christ is black and all that stuff. But they, they really don't believe it deep down inside. If they did, they wouldn't be treating our brothers and sisters the way they're treating us now. Do you understand? So, Sirach 23 and 15. The man that is accustomed to abbreviate words will not be reformed all the days of his life. So, we have to learn how to mortify that tongue. And learn how to speak to each other. And put away the lying tongues. Put away the slanders. You understand? So I'm going to go to, um, where am going to go next? I'm going to go to uh, Ephesians 6 real quick. Because this is the stuff that we got to learn how to um, do Israel, all of us, including myself. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, and I'm going to start at verse 13. Wherefore take ye, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So it says we have to put on this breastplate of truth and righteousness, which is what? Christ. We have to learn of Christ. You understand? And it says, having the breastplate of righteousness and your feet showed, showed up with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's what we're supposed to be out here preaching. We have to go with, you know what I'm saying? We have to go with the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. And that's what a lot of us don't understand what the gospel of peace is. What is the true gospel? What is, what is the gospel that Christ taught before he was put to death? That's what we have to get the grasp on because we have not yet learned Christ. And I'm going to show you why we have not yet learned Christ. Ephesians 4. And it's, I'm going to start at verse 13. And it says, Till we all come in a unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So we all have to come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. That what? Christ was the Son of the Most High and He was put to death and rose on the third day. That's part of the basic principles. Hebrews 6. You understand? Unto a perfect man. That Christ rose to a perfect man. You understand? He was born a perfect man. We have to follow in His footsteps. It's not impossible. Why? Because Zacharias was perfect. Job was perfect. Enoch was perfect. He walked with God. You know what I'm saying? Noah was perfect. These are examples left for us in the scriptures. Joseph, Christ's father, was perfect. He was a just man. He followed the laws. 
that's what we have to understand. We have to start doing things according to what people did into the scripture, not according to what uncle so-and-so did or grandpa or brother so-and-so. We got to learn how to learn what they did according to the scriptures and base it off of that, not off of our past experiences. You understand? So it says, Till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Excuse me, the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we have to fully embrace Christ, and we have not fully embraced Christ. Just because you have a label that says you in Christ does not mean you know Christ. There's a difference between knowing Christ, being in Christ, and doing things that Christ say, you understand? People can claim that they know Christ all day long, but if you have not put on Christ... You do not know Christ. You understand? That we henceforth, so that we henceforth, so from now on, here on out, from henceforth, you understand, be no more children. You understand? So we have to stop. As a, when I was a child, I spake as a child. But when I uh, became a man, I put away those childish things. You understand? That's what we have to do. We're supposed to be men. We're supposed to learn how to talk to each other like men. Not like little high school girls, middle school girls going around slandering tell Baron, talking behind people's back, that's girl stuff. A real man will come to your face and talk to you face to face. Not make comments and not do stuff like that. If you a man, you got to put on a man. When I was a child, I spake as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. If you a man, be a man. Be a man about yours. You understand? So that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried away with every wind of doctrine. So now we coming up with all these new doctrines and we not rooted and the foundation of Christ, so now we're getting tossed to and fro, like a ship in the sea. Like it says in James 1, battered, bam, 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 this side, that side, because we're unstable in our doctrines. We learn Christ, but we, we learn of Christ, but have we learned of the Christ, the Christ? Remember, there's many different messiahs, many is going to come in my name and deceive many, but who is actually learning of the true Christ, according to the Gospels? The Christ that died for you. The Christ that died for me. The Christ that died for our brothers and sisters. Who is learning of that man according to the scripture? Who is walking after his a righteous example? So that's what we have to understand. It's not about who's, who's got this truth, the home of this, who is that. It's about what the scriptures say. So that's what we have to learn to stand. We have to put on Christ. Our time is running short. And if we are not learning Christ, we have to repent. Otherwise, it's going to be death. That's all it's going to be. It's just straight up just like that. It's going to be death if we do not repent. It says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of man, by the deceitfulness, by men that speak crafty, wise words with a big smile on their face. It says by the slate of men, the deceitfulness of men who's going to carry away from the true Christ because they want you to follow after them because their bellies are full, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You understand? And cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. So they're waiting for the simple-minded man so they can trap him. And say, let's see if we can carry him away with this doctrine. And see if they'll follow after us. That's why we're supposed to be followers of Christ. Not after man. Do not put your trust in man. Like it says in Jeremiah 17. Trust no man. you got to trust Christ. And let the Most High guide you in these scriptures. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So Christ is the head of man, and then the Most High is the head of Christ. That's what the order we have to follow, Most High, Christ, man, woman. Those are, the th those are the simple things. These are some of the basic principles. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part. Make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. That's what we have to do. Edify each other in love. If we do not have love for each other, we are doing this for vain, vanity. You can do all this stuff. You can have prophecies. You can have speaking in tongues. You can have all these spiritual gifts. But if you don't have charity, you're doing it in vain. Like Paul says, you're doing this stuff in vain if you do not have love. And a lot of us, we have to admit that we do not love our brothers and sisters. But the change starts within yourself. You have to examine yourself. Like the scriptures say, examine yourself daily. Know you be not in the faith. Don't you know that Christ is in you? Except you be reprobate. So if you don't know that Christ is in you, the most High is not dealing with your mindset. You have to get your mindset right so you can see that Christ is dealing with you. Like the scriptures say in the wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom does not d dwell in the malicious soul. So if, you're full, if your soul is full of evil, evil surmising, evil speaking, slandering, the Most High is not dealing with you until you repent from all that stuff. 
So I'm going to read it again. It says, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, making make an increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. So we have to edify the people with love, which is what? The love of Christ. That what? Christ died for us and he rose on the third day. That is the gospel. That is the basic principles of the gospel. Baptisms, the resurrection, the laying of the hands. That is the basic principles of Christ. And we have not learned that because we are so focused on rebuking and judging by the law that we forgot what Christ was about. You stuck on the laws of Moses. That's why Paul said that you have put that veil over your head. Just like Moses had his veil on, so do you have that veil. We have to take off that veil and examine Christ. Yes, we are still to keep the laws, but are we keeping them under Moses' priesthood, Aaron's priesthood, excuse me, Aaron's priesthood, or are we keeping them under the priesthood of Melchizedek, which is the priesthood of Christ, Hebrews 7. So that's what we have to examine. Are we going to condemn ourselves with the law, or are we going to have mercy, long-suffering, and forgiveness under Christ, which is our high priest now? That's what we have to understand. We stuck on Moses. But truly, if you have believed on Moses... You will believe on Christ. And a lot of us have not believed on Christ because they still, they, they accept Christ, but they don't accept Christ, if you understand what I'm saying. They have speak about Christ, but they have not put on Christ, if you understand what I'm saying. And it says, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles. So do not walk forth as other unrepentant, you know what I'm saying? Walk in the, as they walk in the vanity of their minds. So they walked up puffed up in their own mind. And we're going to get pride in a second. We understand? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. They claim to be in Christ and God, but it says having the understanding darkened. So they have not put on Christ, the real Christ. So their understanding of the scriptures is darkened. They preach from their, from their heart, from the taught by the precepts of man. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. You understand? So it says they preach the ignorance of God because they have not learned the true Christ. So they're preaching off of what they've been taught by this man, by this man, by this man. And the cycle continues. You understand? Because they have not taught, been taught the real Christ. It says who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, strong sexual desires. To work all uncleanness and greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. So these people is doing it. It's telling you what the fruits are. It says they have not yet learned Christ. They what? They learned the law. Yeah, they masters of the law. They do they're the doctors of the law. Modern day Pharisees and scribes. They can script, script, script. This law here. See this law there. You broke this law. But can you flip, flip, flip. This is what Christ said. Flip, flip, flip. This is what mercy is. Flip, flip, flip. This is the basic principles. Can you learn? Can you explain that? Can you teach that? No, because you focus on being a judge of the law. Like James 4, like James 3 says, it says, be not many masters of that. Because by that judgment, you're going to be judged. Nobody wants to be in that judging position. But too many people want to be teachers. It's too many um, chiefs and not enough Indians. Too many people want to jump up and be the man that people want to respect. But you've got to earn the love of the congregation. You can't just pop up and say, okay, I'm this, I'm that. You have to earn the love of the congregation. So it says, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness and greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard of him and have been taught by him, as in the truth is in Jesus, then put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. So you are not supposed to be speaking as you was in the world. If you put on Christ, you're supposed to be speaking righteousness, truth, love, meekness, kindness. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. You're supposed to be teaching the basic principles of Christ. But if you don't know today, Lord's will, the Most High is going to bring it out. You're going to learn today what the basic principles of Christ are. And it says that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So all this stuff is corrupt according to your own lust. If you already had hatred to your brothers and sisters, now you're coming in the truth. Now you're using that hatred to belittle your brothers and sisters. That's not the spirit of Christ. That's the spirit of your father the devil. Just like Christ said, you are of your father the devil. Why? Because you love sin. You love folly. You love talking down to your brothers and sisters. You love hating brothers and sisters that look like you. You understand? 
That's not the spirit of Christ. Christ came and loved his every single Israelite. He died for us. And we can't even get it right. We still have hatred for one another. And Christ came here to seal the deal and he died for us. And we still looking at our brothers and sisters. Nigga, coon, spit, wetback. That's folly. That's foolishness. That's not the spirit of Christ. That is the spirit of your father, the devil. Was Christ rebuked those spirits. You understand? So it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So be refreshed. Rethink your mind. Be little yourself. Remember, humble down. Supplication. You understand? Of your mind. And that you put on the new man. So a lot of us, we claim to be in Christ, but we have not put off that flesh. We just, all we did was grow a beard, put some fringes on and stop eating pork. It's more than that. It's more than being an Israelite than just growing a beard, having a good head wrap, having fringes on. Stop eating pork, shrimp, lobster. Keeping the feast days and Sabbaths. That's the outward appearance of the Jew. And we're going to get that in a second. And it says, And have you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness. Why? Because after God is created in righteousness, you are to put on Christ, which is righteousness in the flesh. You understand? And true holiness. So Christ is the true example of how we are supposed to be holy. Be ye holy. Be ye separate. That is the commandment. So what was I going with this? So it says, put on the new man after which God has created. So um, the, outward, the outward appearance of the Jew. Let's get that. It says, Romans 2. Romans 2 and 28. So it says, for he that is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart, and the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So I'm going to read that again. In Romans 2 and 28, it says, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. So just because you got the biggest beard, because you got the fanciest garments, just because you got the best fringes, just because you got the tightest head wraps, the best designs on your skirt, you stop eating pork, you keeping the Sabbath day, that does not make you a Jew. That is the outward appearance of the Jew. Because anybody can keep a feast day. Anybody can keep the Sabbath. Anybody can grow a beard. Anybody can wear a skirt. Anybody can put on fringes. Anybody can tie, tie a nice hair wrap. It says, neither is that of the circumcision. This because, yeah, a lot of us are circumcised. That doesn't make you a Jew. A lot of other nations are circumcised too. That doesn't make them a Jew. It says, which is the outward in the flesh. So that is the outward appearance of the Jew. And it says, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. Why? Because they renewed themselves. They changed. They put off the old man. They put off the flesh. You understand? So, which is one inwardly up here. You got to be a Jew up here. And circumcision is of the heart. Why? Because their mind changed. They cut out those pieces of the old flesh out of their mind. They dissected themselves inside the head. Rearranged their thought process. It says, not of the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. If you're doing this for the praise of man, then you shouldn't be preaching to God. So you're supposed to be doing this to wake up our people so they can come to repentance. But what? You're so busy being a man pleaser, you forgot what your duty was. You understand? We had to put on the conversation of Christ and put off the old conversation of the man. So I'm going to read it again. It says, But he is the Jew, which is one inwardly. So you have to be the Jew, which is one inside your mind, not outward appearance. It says, and circumcision that is of the heart. So you have to change your mindset. Change your mind. Put off the conversations of the old. In the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man but of God. So we are supposed to be doing this for the praise of the Most High. Through trials and tribulations, we make it to the kingdom. Now we're doing this because... Our deacon, our elder, or bishop, or some whoever else, captains, whoever else, generals, saying go out and do this. No. We are supposed to do this because the Most High commanded us to do this. The Most High said go out and feed my people. The, labor, the harvest is uh, plenty, but the laborers are fruit, uh, uh, few. Excuse me. So we are supposed to do this for the Most High so we can bring in the people to true repentance through the uh, will of the Most High and His Son. You understand? But let's get that some pride, pride scriptures. And Sirach chapter 10. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Y'all bear with me. Sirach chapter... Ecclesiastic is an, an apocrypha. Sirach chapter 10, verse 7. It says, Pride is hateful before God and man. And by both does one commit iniquity. So by having pride, it is hateful before the Most High and by man. And both does one commit iniquity. So you're committing folly and sin 
just by being prideful. It says the beginning, verse 12, the beginning of pride is when one departed from God. So you stepping up, being uh, vainting up, puffed up. It says is one departs from the most high. So you stepped away from God and started doing your own thing. That's when you become prideful. And it says, and his heart is turned away from his maker. Oh, I got a large crowds of people. I got people following me. So let me just start sneaking in my own thing. See if anybody's going to notice. And you start departing from the Most High God. You understand? For pride is the beginning of sin. And he that have it shall pour out abomination. Why he that has pride is going to pour out abomination. Starting with what? Going into false doctrine. Going into the precept of man. Going into man's teaching. And not the teaching of the word of the scriptures. You understand? It says, And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities. And overthrew them utterly. So that fall, like it says in Matthew 7, they're going to be overthrown. And when that day comes, if they, if they don't repent, it says great was the fall of the house. Because they built that house on sand and not on the stone, which is Christ. They have not put on the foundation of Christ, which is that rock. They built that house on sand. And the waves and the trials and tribulations came and slammed it and slammed it and slammed it. And it fell. And the Christ said great was the fall of the house because it was not built upon the foundation of the rock. You understand? So with that, Israel, I'm going to get to a couple more scriptures and then I'm going to uh, end this real quick because um, I know it's getting late for y'all. So I'm going to go to Acts 2 real quick. And Lord's will, whoever is listening to this, they can go on and so brothers and sisters can hear this so they can actually truly repent according to the scripture. So Acts 2 and um, start at verse um, 38 and it says, then Peter actually started at verse 34. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. So King David in the spirit was prophesying of Christ. He said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Who is David's Lord? Which is Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. You understand? And it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand. And we know that Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Most High. Why? Because before Stephen was stoned, he said, I see Christ in his glory, sitting on the right hand of the Father, standing by the right hand of the Father. Hebrews chapter 1, when it says that Christ was sitting on the right hand of the Most High. So the scriptures is all there. Do you understand? We sitting on the right hand, the Mo Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Most High right now, waiting to make his enemies his footstool when he comes back this second time. And when he comes back this second time, you understand? It's going to be bloodshed. If we do not repent, we're going to be part of those people that's getting that bloodshed. So we have to un really understand that. And it says, until I make thy enemies thy footstool, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So the most I have said, uh, Peter was saying, since the one, that, the Christ that y'all killed, this same Christ is your Messiah, was your Savior. But you guys sent him to the Romans to be killed. You understand? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many of the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So save yourselves from this wicked and perverse evil generation. By what? Repenting. And doing what? Being baptized. And it says, then they, glad, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. So this is talking about the baptism of water here because Peter already preached Christ to them. They heard the word. But it says they, they gladly received were baptized. Baptized in what? In that water. They got dipped into that water. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers. So I'm going to read one more scripture and I'm going to end it. Or a couple more, excuse me, sorry. It says, Romans 6. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So Paul's saying, no, no, no. We are not to continue in sin even though that Christ died for us. Christ, uh, grace is not a license to sin. You understand? God forbid. So it says, no, never. It says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us are baptized into Jesus Christ, are baptized into his death? So, so many of us that were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death, symbolic to his death. Christ died on the cross 
and rose up on the third day. We get in that water, we die in that water. We come out, come up a new man. So we we go down, we die not physically, we die spiritually, emotionally, mentally. We we get in that water, baptized into Christ. We get in that water, die an old man, come out a new creature, risen up, resurrected, the same way that Christ was. That's why he says, "Know ye not that so many of us were ba who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore we are." Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father Even so also shall we walk in newness of life For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death of his death We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection So we have to put on Christ put off that old man put on walk in the newness of life after the baptism Change repent because we all sin daily, but we have to repent from that so, but the gist of it is, Israel, we have to put off the former conversations of the old, slanders, lust, you understand, fornication, tell-bearing, lies, speaking evil, appropriate languages, reviling, all that stuff is not fit for the kingdom. And if we don't repent, we're going to be um, dead to the world and dead to Christ. He said, turn away from me, you workers of iniquity, for I have not known you. I only know the ones that do the will of my Father. And that's what we have to do. We have to do, continue to try to do the will of the Most High. And with that, Israel, I pray that we all repent and come into this true understanding of Christ. And with that, I say shalom.